The question is, shine on me. Before that, we heard Talashe Cole's song, Sippin' Not Trippin'. Thank you for joining us, Talashe. All success with that. Uh, now, our next guest is from the Cotswolds. Well, I, I think Oxford is as Cotswolds as you're going to get. It's on the sort of uh, eastern edge of the Cotswolds. Uh, and the, the artist we're going to be speaking with is Oliver Shaw, otherwise known as Worldview. So let's uh, listen in to the conversation that we had together. So we're talking to Oliver Shaw or Worldview, um, either or I suppose. Oliver, welcome to uh, In the Cooler, North Cotswold Community Radio. So tell us about yourself and your, your history. I can see that you're surrounded by guitars. I am, yeah. <laughs> I have an extensive collection. I managed to use most of them on the on the latest album as well. Even though it's quite a synthy album, I still managed to uh, put them to use. Yeah. Yeah. So when did when did you start? You know your interest in music. Oh, I mean it goes back to um, uh, it goes back to the late eighties, I suppose. When I was very young, I started off. I, I, I was very into eighties music and TV themes in particular, stuff like oh. Miami Vice, you know, Yan Hammer, yeah. stuff like that. So. Um, that's when I first took an interest, and Aha as well. They were my first, um, first sort of band love, and then into my teens, I sort of moved away from all that and got into all the sort of sixties stuff, you know, the Beatles and Stones and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, having played in a few bands and stuff, started doing the, the one man band thing where you put it all together yourself in a home studio and build it up and try and sound like a band. And you know, I've made them. Um, several releases that way but on this most recent one i've sort of gone back a bit to that 80s thing and you know the original synth sounds that i was into which you can now do on a pc yes with, you know the software that emulates all the original hardware gear for a fraction of the price which is uh so it's kind of going back to my uh, back to my roots in in midlife really yes yes so um why why the name world view is that an alternative or is that well, but I used to go. I used to go under just the name Oliver Shaw, and then I found this is back. Well, I don't do much live stuff now. It's mainly a studio thing. But I found, you know, my sound was a kind of band sound, and the approach was band sound. And I, I found if I went under a solo name, I couldn't get sort of band gigs. Everyone just wanted the acoustic troubadour thing, which I did do as well. I enjoyed doing. You can really get the lyrics across when you're doing an acoustic. So, yes. You know, people really listen, and, and the lyrics are important to me. But so I had a, on an early solo album, Oliver Shaw album, I had a song called Worldview, and then I just stuck with that because my lyrics tend to be quite, you know, they're either philosophical or they're sort of a bit, you know, social commentary. Or, so it kind of works, basically. But um, unfortunately, there are about six or seven other worldviews. Yes, I know. A lot of them seem to be sort of Christian rock bands in the US and stuff like that. So yeah. it hasn't been ideal from that point of view. But <laughs> well, anyway. when I was looking you up, so to speak, I thought, worldview and as you rightly say there are several other worldviews and i had to pin you down all over yeah, your yeah. worldview yeah. Uh, and that got me to the right place um so your your lyrics this latest album the title of which is it's it's called young eyes burning bright which is a, a line from the open track but it's kind of ironic because it's actually looking back on in midlife on all your kind of early hopes and aspirations and then also looking at young people around now who are We've got all that ahead of them, so it's a kind of it's a bittersweet title, basically. Yes. And, yes. Uh, yeah. It's it, lyrically, it's kind of about that, and it's also about I had a few in the last year or two, quite a few sort of bereavements and things, and then also there's the, the pandemic around, so it's about kind of mortality as well, and uh, you know. But I should say that musically, it's quite upbeat. If anyone's sounding uh, <laughs> yes. being massively put off by the, you know, it's uh, it's quite danceable in places as well. So they, uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I, ca I should imagine, in fact, listening to a lot of music that's been produced in the last 12 months, a lot of it is very reflective, of course, uh, because that's just the way it is, isn't it? You know, you you either have something that's happened that you weren't expecting or you're managing to survive and, you know, it's made you more productive lyrically or artistically. Uh, lots of innovative ideas about promoting gigs somehow, you know, online streaming and all the rest of it. Yes, and um, audiences, audiences have definitely wanted it, haven't they? They wanted whether it's streaming telly or or music. You know, um, they've needed something. I think you know, people have realised how important culture is to them. Yes, and and of course the hope is that come June the twenty first, when supposedly all restrictions come off, um, we might start seeing live gigs again. Uh, dependent on, I suppose, people's attitudes towards being in 
you know, close proximity to others, how that's going to work, we don't know. Um, how people, will they be nervous about it or will they not care uh, because they think, well, you know, we've all been vaccinated, so it don't matter. Um, but it'll be interesting to see the effect. When, yeah, yeah. Um, how, how, when all this beds down, how much it's changed things in the long term. As you say, people doing, you know, online collaborations and, and, and gigs that way as well, whether that's here to stay as well. Yeah, but of course, the thing is, online doesn't necessarily earn you any money, does it? Um, which is really what a musician needs. No, I mean, that's unfortunately just other than, I suppose, very high profile live gigs. Mm. Basically, nothing makes you any money more, any more money as a musician now. I mean, in a way, there's never been a better time to have it out there because the channels are there. You know, everyone can be digitally dist distributed and be on internet radio and things like that. But there's no income from it and it's saturated because everyone's doing it, really. Yes, so. that's, the, that's the problem with it, isn't it, really? Um, and... Uh, yeah, so it's it's raising. I mean, a lot of folk do things because they love to do it. I mean, it's like radio presenting, you know, for, yeah. for a volunteer station, not getting paid yeah. for it, but just the satisfaction of doing it, meeting people, uh, asking what they're doing, why they're doing it, and so on. Um, and uh, and the same, I guess, for for many musicians is they just love it because that's, that's it. what you're, they you're do. Doing it because you want to do it, really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've had I had one. TV placement years ago now that, that was kind of you know almost subliminally in a in a BBC drama that I did make lots of money from and that still comes in in royalties but those things are you know that one one that it's a huge numbers game those things are very few and far between and again everyone's chasing them as well yes yeah so you can have millions of plays on Spotify for example but it might not earn you more than I don't know fifty it, quid or something oh, like something like that yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think I think. Uh, I think Spotify got agreements with the big record companies that obviously makes it worth their while, but for everyone else, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. Uh, you've really got to be doing it for the love of it now, I think, yeah. Yes, and, and maybe, you know, you'll just strike lucky, that's, that's I well, guess... Well, that's it, that's well, it, not, isn't yeah. it, You know, people like what you do and people promote it and are able to promote it. I mean, we're an internet station, so we're not just confined to the North Cotswolds or the Cotswolds even, but the world. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it's, everything's changed so much in the last 20 years. I mean, when I first started putting out releases, you know, you'd have to, you'd physically make a CD, you'd make sticky labels, you know, you'd make something presentable, you'd hawk around, hawk it around local record shops. And now, you know, I mean, the track that I've got out on the radio from this album, you know, I finished it probably about a month ago, and already it's, you know, getting played in Australia and stuff like that, you know, it's, it's, it's sped up and it's, you, your reach is, is much bigger. Yes, yeah. So there's, I suppose, there's satisfaction in that as well, isn't there? You know, yeah, it's like, it, yeah, yeah. yeah, we we take we take satisfaction from knowing that we have listeners in China. <laughs> Which, well, that's it. I mean, you're not you're no longer a, a, a local. You no, know, a, a, yeah, yeah. It's, no, the it's, internet it's, the internet has a big reach, doesn't it? Uh, has made the world a very small place. So you've got this album out, um, and presumably, when you know things get back to quote normal unquote. Uh, you'll tour with it, will you, or do gigs, or is that what I mean, you... To be honest, having having done that for sort of a year, I mean, it's, it's partly, I think when you reach a certain age, you feel like you might be a bit of a kind of David Brent kind of figure, you know, still <laughs> chasing the dream when yes. you're over 40. And also the stuff that I I do, because it's quite multi-genre and it's quite produced yes. and quite, you know, other than just using loads of backing tracks, I've always struggled to really sort of pull it off live. So these days... Other than a few, I have I have a side project um, uh, with a friend of mine, Desmond Chancer, where I I play piano and he sort of croons. That's a different project, so we do that live, yeah. which is fun. But for my stuff, I'm I'm really I'm quite happy to to have it, you know, online and on the internet. Yeah, so, and, so and you're you're more you're more in the nature of a studio band. That's right. I'm a kind of Steely Dan kind of thing. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes. No, exactly, exactly. So the title of the album again, just so that folk know. It's, it's Young Eyes Burning Bright, yeah. And uh, just, to, just, just to plug it, it's on there. Uh, it's on Spotify. And uh, if I'm allowed to, if I'm allowed to. Oh, yes, yes, well, we yes, have, yes, come it's on. on. It's on all the digital, um, it's on all the digital platforms. Yeah. Yes, yes. Along with my, as this, my back catalogue of three other Worldview albums that are on there as well. So, um, presumably, you're still songwriting. I mean, you obviously don't stop as a songwriter, do you? No, I mean, it's funny. I did have a few years. Um, uh, as I say, I just had a success. I'd had a TV placement. And then, for some reason, I just could hardly pick up a guitar for a few hours. I don't know whether it's a, some kind of midlife thing or, or just, uh, you know, the, the zeal had gone. And then it was around the time of lockdown, actually, when it all sort of started to come back. And I, what I found was all the years when I thought I hadn't been doing anything, of course, it's still going around in your head and a lot of the 
experiences and thoughts I was drawing on in these songs had come from that period anyway. So, you know, I mean, it all works itself out. I'm a great believer in a lot of this stuff is happening in the unconscious over time. And, yeah. you, know, you, you can't, you can't rush it. You just, you know, luckily I don't have a record company breathing down my neck asking for product. <laughs> in that sense, that's good. But, um, you know, you've just got to, you've just got to wait till it comes really. So I, I've noticed that all the guitars that are hanging on the wall behind you, I presume you are a multi-instrumentalist. I am, yeah. Um, guitars, um, keyboards and bass and, uh, you know, all, all the vocals as well. And I produce everything as well, which again is something that's just, you know, now I've got on my PC the equivalent of what would have been hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of studio gear in the 80s. It's all replicated, to, you know, in in software and it's just absolutely incredible what you've got at your fingertips but luckily people in my generation who sort of learn the long way round can appreciate it and have the ideas first and then use it because people starting out now with all too many choices you know it's easy to just get to get lost in it all really you have to have the idea first i think and then yes yeah, and then work on it amazing yeah, yeah. I, was, I was speaking to a couple of lads from ireland last week and uh, they said in their late teens no one of them is in his mid-20s uh, his brother's a little bit younger, and they they kind of started as a three piece themselves, and they were saying that the the lockdown period has been a bit of a blessing to them in some ways because they've had to learn how to how to do things for themselves. You know, instead of going to a studio and paying somebody and paying for the producer and all the rest of it, they've learned how to use the software and to do it themselves. Uh, yeah, and if you do do that, you've got far more control over it. And you're not going to be going to a studio and be rushed doing rushed performances and you know you can you can decide how you want it yeah if you get to grips with all that stuff absolutely yeah so you've got more control more editorial control haven't you over your output absolutely, yeah. uh, and it's that's very well. that's very important isn't it yeah so um any current themes running through your head that are going to be the subject of um you know, your next album or your next i, I album? think having having done one this, I, I should stress it's lyrically quite heavy but musically you know it's it's toe tapping in places um i'm probably going to do something that's a bit more outward looking and a bit you know more about possibly about you know the craziness that's going on at the moment generally but maybe in a slightly more light-hearted way and just yes. a, bit, a bit more outward looking yes uh, looking at things sort of um sociologically rather than just the, the person or the slightly <laughs> morbid yeah. yes okay well I, I think that's a good idea <laughs> ooh, ooh. it's always been it's generally always been that kind of mix yes. to be honest. i mean yeah. part of the frustration i've had is that people in the industry have see what I can do musically in the different genres and they just want you to become a, a background songwriter for other people and I'm like well if you listen to my stuff it's actually quite specific you couldn't really have kind of an over singing even though it sounds a bit like that you know it's lyrically it's quite sort of sophisticated and it's quite it's my singular yeah. worldview if you see what I mean so um, yeah. it's always surprised me that people have thought I can do that which I don't think I could do but there you no are. well there you go you see uh, people do notice things sometimes and uh, it can be quite reassuring <laughs> that you're on the right track. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I've probably got myself to blame as much as anyone else for, you know, you've been too much of a diva to, you know, you've got, if you want to really make it, you've got to compromise early on and then you get into a position where you can do your own thing. Yes. Yeah. I know that now. I didn't think that when I was 20. That's, no, that's of course how not. You, that's no. how you live and learn. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes you, you learn the hard way, as they say. Um, oh. But uh, but there you go, there you go. Well, I wish you success with the uh, the album, and with your future songwriting. Thank and, you very uh, much. And thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us on North Cotswold Community Radio. Thanks for having me. It's great to be, as you say, talking to people who do it for the love and have a passion and uh, you know an interest and in, and in get these things out there. And it's good that your your own reach is um, pretty uh, you know in a place like China. So <laughs> they're certainly making waves. <laughs> Here and there. Yeah. <laughs> Oliver Shaw, thank you very much. Okay, that's great. Huh? As if we were 
track people just leave from oliver shaw and worldview thank you oliver for spending your time with us here on nccr's in the cooler <laughs> 